Isaiah 54, 5 through 8. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief as though you were a young wife abandoned by her husband, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will take you back. In the best of anger I turned my face away for a while, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I'm talking to you on uh, uh, what I call who is your husband. Um, when you say who is your husband, a lot of the times everybody, everybody looks at it. Uh, marriage, yes, marriage, yeah, it's true. Now, last week I was teaching on Mother's Day and I spoke on the fact that um, women are influencers and men are powerful. I spoke on the fact that people like Esther was a person like Esther was given half the kingdom and she chose influence I mean if you remember um, I spoke about Salome and Herodias and I was talking about the fact that they were asked out, you, the king Herod the Great said I will give you half the kingdom she said no I, I want the head of John the Baptist I spoke about Jezebel, who had power but didn't want to be king, was influencing Ahab. And last time I was teaching the pastor and I said, I will not, there, there are also women who wanted power, like Atalia. Atalia was a wicked woman. She killed her husband, and when her son became king, she killed the son, and she became not a queen, a king. <laughs> that is Atalia. So, there are women also who want to eat power. And you could look at um, Delilah. Delilah had um, for both where Delilah would go with an influence and influence is the man Samson and that is power. Now, now um, I've asked this question before and I, I want to let me do it this way first. Who answered this question for me? Uh, I want a stranger. Um, can I worry you? You are married, so let me use you as an example. Why did David leave and went to the roof of his building and saw uh, Bathsheba bath him? Note, he went to the roof of the house. Do you know why? For 50 cities. That I'll answer it in two, in two spaces. Okay. So the first one was, it was time for kings to go to war. And he didn't go to war. So that is why that happened. Now the second one, he wanted to see what is happening in his surroundings. Not true. Now yesterday I was teaching and, um, you see, oh no, after the pastor said, your hands are up, how am I? <laughs> Uh, you? Anybody at the back, I don't mind you. Somebody has informed you. Now, the truth is that Solomon's mother taught Solomon a lot of wisdom. So if we Proverbs 31, he said the wisdom, the prophecy which his mother taught him. So a lot of the things that Solomon writes is not just Solomon. Yes, it's God. But Solomon had the advantage of a wise woman as a wife. Um, as husband, um, as mother, and a wise king, as David, as a father. Now, it will shock you that um, Abigail was a wife, powerful wife, to David after Nabal the fool died. So you can be a wise woman and marry a fool. But what happened was that she used her wisdom to save Nabal, and Nabal became very rich. That is influence, and yet she was humble. I like the way you are quiet. So one day Solomon was writing and giving advice to women in marriage. And he said, it is better for a man to dwell at the roof of a building than to live in a room with a quarrelsome wife. So why did... (laughs) 
Why did David go to the top of the roof? It is most likely the woman she was living with in the room at that time were quarrelsome. How do I prove this? Because Michal, David's first wife, was in the house. And if you know this very well, when David danced, I don't remember, and everybody was praising David. Oh, David, you've done well. David, you are a king. The only person who had the audacity to speak against David was Michal. And when a king sends his people to go to war, the king doesn't have peace. The fact that people are at war and you are a king, I'm a pastor, I know this, if you send people and they have no return, you are not at peace. Your spirit goes with them. Gay, um, I don't have time. Elisha said to, Naam, um, to Gehazi, was not my spirit with you when you went to speak to Naaman. So when, let's say, if I send you to do something, because I sent you, my grace must go with you. So I must make sure that you return safe or else my reputation and my name is in trouble. So everybody's gone to war and they said, David, you can't go to war because you are, you are the light of Israel. If you go out and we die, you die, we, we will miss a strategic person. We will miss the person who gives us covering. We will miss the person who makes us who we are. So in order for that not to happen, don't go to war. And David is in the house with all these wonderful women and he decides to leave and go to the top of a building, the roof, and sees a woman bathing and brings a curse on the whole generation. Now the question is, why would he leave to the roof? And why would Solomon write and say that it is better to live on top of a building? <laughs> there is nothing wrong with... You see, when um, you see everybody praising a man, when you see everybody encouraging your leader, whether you like it or not, you must learn to be the best of the worshippers. And I keep saying that Every woman is a worshiper. But our worship is not only to God. But our worship is also to people we see called our father, our husbands. And that is the key that brings result. Look, a daughter can easily convince a father than a son convincing a father. And a son can easily convince a mother. Oh, it's not true. <laughs> now, if we are here, you can. If we are a man, I'm sure you can relate how you and your man behave. If we are lady, you can know how you and your father behave. Oh, I think. Uh, uh, can we continue? Oh, can, can can we continue? So David left his house because when a man a man is in a house, there are certain things a man wants to have. Peace, praise, honor. Even the, the room being, if a man to run to the top of the building, it, it, there could be dust in the room. <laughs> Personally, I'm allergic to dust. So if you see me with cold and all those things, I've been exposed to dust. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? I think, I think I'm not teaching well so far. The way you are quiet. So the man leaves to that rooftop and honor Jim from her. Now, when I was teaching the pastors, when God, deserves, God, God, God says that I am your husband, I'll get deep into it. When God doesn't get praises from man, he gets it from stones. Jesus said, if you people refuse to cry out, the stones will cry out. When a man doesn't get the praise he deserves from men, from other people, anybody will give the man praise. Please, at this rate, I'm not talking to boyfriend, girlfriend.
Lamentations 3.17, because I lack peace, I forgot prosperity. Nobody prospers under the environment where there is no peace. And, and to a man, a home is a safe heaven. It's, it's, it's a heaven. It's when, when, when a man says that my, I'm going home, what he's saying is that he's going to heaven. Out far away from all troubles, all problems, all wahala. So, in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 54, God said that your creator is your husband. Your creator is your husband. Now, in other words, you see, a man, I'm teaching things that will shock some of you, but let me go on. A man has to be able to create a woman's world. I tell women, don't marry a man who can't create your world. Because it's the world they create for you that you both live in. And every woman has a world. Every woman has a way she wants to live a life. I think I'm not teaching here. Yeah. Some women, whether I like it or not, they know how to wash, but they want to wash a machine. Yes, I'm say. You can't, somebody has raised their daughter with washing machine, dishwasher, for 20 something years. You want to marry the person one day and change the person's world. No. You should have asked, they would have told you. <laughs> and God was going to marry one of my daughters, and the mom came to me and said, Pastor, do you know that my daughter is earning roughly 20,000 Ghana cities. I said, yes. And do you know that when he marries this man, the money becomes that of the man? I said, yes. Then he said, so what are you doing about me? Who suffered to raise my daughter? I said, you've spoken. So I had to, in, in the counseling, I had to tell the man that, Master, if you know you are marrying the woman, you should understand that any amount of money the mother needs, not from your money, from the wife's money must go to the mother. If not, this marriage can come on. And the guy agreed. Because the, I, I, I think you are not here at all. Sometimes when people say, I don't agree to the man, no, I don't agree. It's not the marriage you are going, you know. It's the... <laughs> Is it true? It's not true. It's not the marriage, it's the benefits that of somebody's life investment, like let's say. Somebody's only daughter, only daughter, has gone PhD, is working at the bank, making 20,000 Ghana cities minimum every month. And as soon as he marries, the two shall become one. So all the money and everything becomes the husband. And the husband will now decide when to send money to. So I tell people that, yes, there is a world that the woman needs. And that world has to be created. So for your maker or your creator is your husband. The Lord of hosts is name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Now, can I, can I continue? I, I sure I should continue. So now let's look at Genesis chapter 1. And last week I was saying that um, um, the woman, every woman is like a Holy Spirit, right? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. A woman meets a man who is without form and void. But a woman is the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God moved around. Now, as a man, you will know. I hear this man is woman's man, so let me do some relationship things. As a woman, you will know the worth of the person you are going to marry based on how your life has improved since you started dating the Holy Spirit. And I was saying last week that the Holy Spirit doesn't make noise. He's silent. But all the miracles we see in the world is by the Holy Spirit. God said, let there be. The Holy Spirit makes it happen. God said, let there be. Let it. So, and it's like, I'm not ready. I'm tired. A woman has a way of making a man not to get tired. How? 
How many men know how a woman can change your life, even when you are not married them? Oh, men, you mind me. Oh, I know men. A woman can make a man have flat tummy. I don't like people with big tummy. What's that? That's that they call him. Uh, guys, is it true? It's not true. The only time they stop the gym is after they are married to you. Campaign time is over. After election, no more campaign. But how does a woman keep the campaign going? You know something that makes God make the elders worship God? When you bend and you lift up, God has done another miracle. And so you have to worship. Men who keep giving things and blessing their wives will always have more worship. And women who know how to say a lot of thank you always have more miracles. Hey! So you come to church, you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. How do you accept Jesus as your Lord and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and you call him what Lord? Do you know who is Lord? He's the controller of all affairs. So Isaiah 54 will tell you that he is the one who created you and he controls all your affairs. He is in charge of all your affairs. Now the next thing I'll tell everybody then is that if you are going to marry a man, find out if this man, you will ever allow this man to control your life the rest of your life. It's not about what the person can control today. Has the person gotten the intuition, the brain, the mindset to be able to understand the volume of your vision in 20, 30, 40 years from now? Because some men stop dreaming. But God, when the elders bow down in worshipped because of the way God looks. By the time they lift up their head, God has done awesome, awesome God. And say, Kai, let me say more. One of the things you men don't like is men who are stagnant. Hey, here are there some men are making. Since 1645, as it was in the beginning, so it shall ever be world without end. I came to meet you with JSS degree. You have JSS. The job you've been doing has been bringing 2,000 Ghana cities since we married. It's been five years. You are still earning 2,000. I was talking to somebody who was like, and this is interesting. My husband has won a lot of certificates for at work. Best worker. Best that. Best that. But I don't see it at home. I said, I don't understand. You know, you, how do you become best worker at work and your salary doesn't increase? So, worshippers always want improvement. I think I'm not teaching here. Uh, women, is it true? It's not true. Women get bored at people, men who don't improve. Who don't add value. Because when a man has not added value to his life, he will never add value to you. A man can never give anything except what he has. When it has no aim, no vision, no purpose of where they are going in life, you yourself, you go nowhere in life. Yeah, sex is good. But I was telling them yesterday, uh, sex to a young man is great. But when you become a man, peace is greater than sex. <laughs> <laughs> you value peace than sex. So the sex material will be there, but you will not be moved. Kojo is dead. It is no more living because there's no peace here to function middle. The middle is nowhere. The highway is closed. When the bills are coming, the pressures are coming. Having done everything, then what shall we eat? But that is not true. (laughs) 
So the, look at look at the lady sitting there and say, Holy Spirit, how are you? Tell a lady. A lady is telling a guy, we are not Holy Spirit, we are God. <laughs> So, so let me give an example. The Holy Spirit hears God say, let there be light. Women, let the man tell your vision and hold him accountable. You said in three years time we will move from this house. What has happened? Let there be light. The Holy Spirit moved over the surface. Pushing the things for the word of God to become. Now, you said we will be here in three years. The way you are sleeping there, it will be six years old. <laughs> well, sweetheart, where have you got into? It's one year already. One day, when we moved into our own house, mommy did something which was interesting. She said, two years' time, I'm collecting rent. I said, ah, but we are in our own house, so what is rent for? She said, if you were renting, every two years you make money. So that every two years we can renovate the house and keep the standards higher. I said, okay, that's a nice one. But you know, most people after we have our own house. Hallelujah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Life is ended. By keeping rent for two years, for the next ten years, if we're paying rent, could have bought you another land to build another house and start making another money. Because the Holy Spirit should have a way. I think I'm not preaching here. So God is also our husband. So that is why when God tells you, I'm going to do something for you, you have to also make sure you are the Holy Spirit that makes sure that God is keeping his word. How do you keep God in his word? By, you might, by keeping, you must keep remembering him. I read the Bible and sometimes you think that God forgets. He doesn't forget, but I was giving an example yesterday when my associate pastor from SCC came here for training. And when I met him, I said, where is this girl? Where is this girl? I can, I can remember the face. I remember what she does. I remember who she is, but her name was not coming because I told her to be sending me good morning and good night and she stopped for about a year and her face was coming. That is Kezia. Her face was coming. And she said, Kezia, she's there. So, okay, if you go, I greet her. Now, what? I forgot her name. But that doesn't mean that I don't remember what she has done. There's a parcel for you, but your name is missing in God's brain because you don't keep communicating. So, if you read First Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says, Hannah goes to church and she says that I, I, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've given offerings, I've done this, I've done, I do, I serve than everybody in church, but God, you have not given me a child. Praise to God, praise to God, praise to God. That's the Holy Spirit. Remembering God. The Holy Spirit does not condemn God. Doesn't speak, motivates. Reminds God of his word. I'm thinking I'm not teaching here well. And whilst that was happening, the Bible said, and Hannah went home and knew the husband and the Lord remembered her. Ah! The Lord remembered So, had God forgotten her? No. She was not forgotten, but she was out of sight because she was doing what she wanted than what he wanted. When you do what you want with your husband, everything you want is put aside till you do what he wants. You are lost. Let's read the scripture. The only place I'll read. When Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea. Give me the King James. The Lord remembered her. So has she forgotten? The original King James will tell you what it is. The Lord remembered her. What was it that she remembered? Now the offering. Psalm 20 said, may the Lord remember your offerings. Has she forgotten the offering? But there are certain things you are not doing. There are certain things you are not picking up. You want to have your way, but there is a place called his way. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things you also need to be granted. Do what I want, and you get what you want. So, Hezekiah goes to God. After a prophet has told him he's going to die, that's not for God, it's a husband. And then Hezekiah tells God, that, <laughs> God, I don't care the prophet you brought. I have a relationship with you. Have you forgotten? I've done this, 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 I've done this. And God said, prophet, go back. Add 50 more years to his life. I have to change the course of this world to do it. Why? Because had God forgotten what he had done? No. It was up to him to also activate what the man of God or God has said. Most women don't keep their men accountable to their word. That is why men who are not committed to their word are not maritable material. My dear power, how? Is it a bad teaching? Let there be light. The Holy Spirit is there. I want to go to school. Start. Inner conviction. Am I teaching something here? So, Isaiah 54 will tell you that I, the Lord, your maker, I am your husband. And I was saying last week that no husband just marries. A husband will first date. So before you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he came to you with the salvation message. If you become born again, I will save you. I will protect you. I will guide you. I will do this for you. Okay, I give myself away so you can use me. Please, are you, are you here with me? Now, it is up to you when you become born again to tell God that, God, I am born again. You promised me this. Where is it? And it's not an insult. So, Peter in Mark chapter 10 came to Jesus one day. Jesus was teaching. <clears throat> and he said, nobody who has left father or mother or kingdom for my sake or the gospel's sake will, um, will, will, will be forsaken. Then Peter said, uh, can I ask you a question, my husband? Your husband is your Lord. Can I ask you a question, my Lord? We have left everything and followed you. What shall we get? He said, ha, thanks for remembering me. You will gain houses, this, that, and the world to come eternal life. Someone said, did they get those houses? Yes, they did. He said, prove it. Read your Bible in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3. When the Holy Ghost came, people sold their houses and brought their money to Peter. <laughs> People handed over their properties to Peter. And when one Ananias didn't bring the right bill, the person died. <laughs> and, oh God, you do not understand me. Because the Holy Spirit will not allow. It was a promise to them. <laughs> if women were to keep men accountable, men would stop promising and yobbing. But you know what we like? I'll do this for you. I'll do this for you. 14 years, nothing has happened. Then you are still, I'll, I'll do this for you. 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 The worshippers worship because of what they see. Your maker is your husband. So ask somebody who is born again sitting by you, who is your husband? Now, let me tell everybody that every woman, your husband first is not the man you are actually married to. Your husband first is God. Man, our husband is God. God doesn't see us as males. He sees us, all of us, as females. The spirit and the bride says, come.
So the head of a man is Christ. And the head of the woman is a man. Put it together. So the head of the woman is Christ. So now this will bring the question of I don't have much time. This will now bring the question of how then is it that God is our husband but we don't get what we want. We don't get what he has promised us. Number two. You can be married and the resources are going outside the house and not coming inside the house. Because submission will always lead to flow. Competition doesn't bring flow. Where you are aligned to will determine where the flow comes to. The oil doesn't flow up. The oil flows down. <laughs> you didn't hear that one. <laughs> Yes, one of my daughters asked me, why is that? It's wrong. It's wrong. I won't, I won't agree. And David going to the rooftop and going for somebody else is wrong. I won't agree, but I'm talking about hiring. Why would a man take money and give it to outsiders and not give to insiders? There could be a line of alignment. Let me tell you this. Every man wants praise than women. Let me tell you this. Statistics has proven that men die like out of 100 people. Men die more. A man will climb to the top of a roof to make a woman happy. Or is it true? It's not true. Oh. When you were in school, when you were going for run races, and the ladies start giving fans. Master, if even your ribs are breaking, you will keep running. Oh, is it true? Or it's not true. Pastor Victor, is it true? Or it's not true. When, but, but you are playing football and the girls are giving you fans. It's like your skills naturally come. When you get the ball, you remember the girl. A man who has no reason to bring money home will never make money. If the man's reason for making money is just for business, then the man will never come home. Oh, am I teaching well here? Or I'm making you even more colder. If you give him a reason for coming home, there'll be a reason for investing in home. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know that if there's no real reason for coming to church, sometimes it's difficult to come to church? But when you know that you have to hold camera, people are waiting for you. Actually, I tell you, the best way to keep serving God is to try to be a pastor. Because if you try to be a pastor, you read your Bible every day, not because you want to read, but because you have to teach. You pray every day. Isn't it true? Today, one of her, her sheep sent me a training they've been doing. When your people are your sheep, is coming. what do I do with this? What do I do? You have to study your Bible. If you know, if you study, you have to go and ask questions. So, am I teaching something here? There, there is a reason. What reason does your man have coming home? We watched a, a video yesterday and Friday um, with the one who has the largest church in the world, Paul Young Cho. He said he has the largest church in the world, but he said he has he said three or four children. They don't know him. He said, when the children see him, they call him Pastor Cho. He said, it's hurting because he sleeps a lot in church. But the children call him Pastor Cho. They tell him that we see you more as a pastor than the father. What? Now ask yourself, what is the reason that keeps you coming to church every day? Number one, it could be a need. Number two, it will be for communication. Number three, association. You meet people that you want to laugh with, smile with. Oh, is it true? Number four, there's an assignment to do. Now, what should be the reason why a man should come home?
Let me give you one, one of the reasons why I love to go home. There are more, but let me give you one particular one. I get to my gate, and wherever a race is, she will run. Give me a hug. Daddy, there's something I have to tell you. This girl has always something to tell me. Then she will start. Yesterday, you know what she told me? She said, I don't know what. There's something wrong with my school. I said, something wrong? She said, they play bad music. I said, what is bad music? Daddy, you don't know bad music? The music without the name of Jesus. Well, I was interested. I've, I've, I've come home with so much stress and she's telling me, Etoli. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I, oh, am, I, am, I, am I talking? There should be a reason. <coughs> home should not be a place to sleep. Home should be a place to come in, incubate, have energy and bring me more resources. Just like church is a place to come to be empowered for the whole week. When you have hopelessness, life is not anything. Somebody says something that those churches that take people in the morning, they go to church in the morning instead of they going to work. Send this message to them. Number one, when churches do service Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, this is the factor. There are a lot of housewives that men have left at home that don't go anywhere. They have nothing to do. Then they get bored at home. And sometimes if you are not careful, the houseboy and the house will be the one communicating them. Very soon, Satan will talk to Eve. (laughs) I think I'm not preaching here. (laughs) But at least if in the morning they get up and they go to church and they come back before you come and cook your meal and make sure you are okay, at least there is hope. Is it true? It's not true. Number two, a lot of young people could be thieves and armed robbers if they don't have work to do and they are sleeping in the house during the day. And everybody's going to work. As they are lying down, they say, all work is work. They took this way. Oh. But at least when they wake up in the morning, instead of they what? Being thieves, they go to church. A lot of them could have committed suicide, sexual immorality. But at least they go to church to have hope. If we don't get any miracle, the song we sing, the way we clap, or is it the prayer we pray, has to have given them hope. Because it's not everybody who has finished university that has a job. But they say, why should they go to church during working hours? Is it, have you given them work that they didn't go? <laughs> Give them work. And if they say, I'm going to church, you can say, okay. Oh, hello. If you want me to give you 20 reasons why morning service during the week is important, especially in Africa, the media should engage me. And I'll give them over 20 reasons. Because I've been there before. Frustration can make you become anything. Frustration. It's an offering. And I hear things like, they say things like, they say things like when a pastor needs a thing, people give offering. When members need a thing, they don't give offering. And I laugh. Everybody who offers service gets paid. You, and a pastor offers service. And if a pastor offers service, when a pastor needs something, they must pay. Lawyers offer service. Or is it true? It's not true. Everybody who offers service ends up being paid from the service they render. So if you are a member and you also need um, something rendered to you, we should also look at your service. But if you are always there for the man of God to give you, receive, I prophesy, lay hands on you, you are breaking through and you are not rendering service, then we can also... Oh, I think you are not hearing what I'm saying here. Look at somebody who is your husband. I didn't hear you. Now, your, 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 your maker being your husband expects you to submit. Submission is alignment. So let me give you this before I come to some of the things your maker expects of you. You see, 
In the parable Jesus spoke about in Matthew 3, he spoke about a man who did a big wedding party. And at the wedding party, he invited the rich, the affluent, the politician, named them to come. And they gave very nice excuses. One of the excuses they gave was, I'm newly wedded, so I need to go and enjoy my honeymoon. What is nice about going to a newly wedded and going to a wedding reception? At least, it's also a way of having fun. They say they, one so said he's bought a land. She's so going to inspect. Who inspects a land in the night? <laughs> when you are when you are you are wedded, there's a wedding with another person's wedding, and there's a reception. I don't know if you know that it's nice to be partying when you are. Oh, uh, they said they are too busy. The other one who said, I've bought a land, I'm going to check in the night. The other person also said that he's bought a new donkey, he's going to try the donkey or the moon. Who tries a donkey in the night? So when <coughs> the king got to know, what the king decided to do was simple. He said, go anywhere, everywhere, and get people to fill the place. So they went... And out of desperation, the whole world came. Now, let's note that sometimes, can I teach? Especially for our ladies. Sometimes there's a particular person you want to marry. But son, out of frustration, you put everybody now in the book. Now, everybody now was invited. <laughs> nobody, everybody's making an excuse. Everybody's giving everything. So, now they, 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 everybody can come. Everybody can come. Please, I said Matthew 24. I said 20. My central scripture, don't change it. They all make excuses. Matthew 22, 8 through 4. 4 8, Matthew 22. So, now that the, the room was open, everybody can come. Can you just imagine? And now, whenever your life comes to a place where everybody can enter, there must be rules and regulations. Because you know what? Actually, people who have made it to the top, those who have a donkey, those who have bought a land, those who are married, these three things, they are people who have worked in setting rules and revelation in order to arrive there. And those kind of people, they don't just accept any invitation. This is a word to the ladies. The kind of men most often, most ladies look up to in heaven. They don't just come because you flaunt your butt. They make excuses. And some of the excuses they give, I'm already married. <laughs> My business is not giving me time. Or is it true? Oh, hello? I'm inspecting bills. There's nobody who builds who has time to waste on money. When you start building 50 cities, pizza crowd on top. Everybody who is building is chisel. I said the person doesn't have a timeline to finish building. Is it true? It's not true. Ah, you are not the young get. So what happened was that now the invitation from the king was like, just imagine the king is the one who's going to get uh, this thing. Wedding. Everybody can come. 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 So everybody comes in. Everybody comes in. And now the place is full. There's a long list. But whilst the wedding was going on, boom, people were chilling, eating chicken, white chicken, everybody was eating. The king decided to walk through the congregation and saw a guy who was still not dressed to come to a wedding. He still wore his old clothes 
old lifestyle, old behavior, old mindset. This is me. Take me as I am. He said what? I wish you wear a dress to be at the wedding. <coughs> he should be happy. I've come to his wedding. Oh, when have you invited those people? Did they come? Don't, don't tell me to change energy. No, this is how I want it to be. Every great man will associate with a disciplined and orderly person than a person who just do what they want to do. So in Esther chapter 2, and I've taught you this, and it's in the book of Palace Protocol. All the thousands of women who wanted to marry the king. And any dress you wanted to wear will be given to you. And by before that, everybody was made to wash down with oil of myrrh for six months and oil of frank incense for six months. Making one year. In other words, your body smell. Your body smell. Can I say something here, guys? One of the things that draws ladies away from you is body smell. Work on it. No, no matter how good you are, ladies don't like bad smell. I think I'm not preaching well here. Do you, do you remember when Lazarus was dead and Jesus said, let's open the tomb. You know what Mary said? By now he smells. <laughs> of all the excuses he gave, he didn't say that he's dead. He said, oh, by now. Let, Ladies don't like smell. They can smell, but you don't smell. <laughs> that is why God said, ah, ladies, it is not true. That is why God, God in the Bible, the Bible said, the men should love, and the women to submit. L- love her the way she is, eh? But she must submit. So, I don't know who craft and this. I don't know who born for. That's why me, I bath like four times a day. If, if you're a man, bath. If you're a man, do what? If you're a man, do what? Bath. If you don't have water, have a nice towel. And buy that all. So that the, you put some inside and you clean the vantage points. Be fresh. And brush your teeth twice a day. With all the wraps, if it's coming in the scent. <laughs> am, am I teaching something here? Ah, 15 minutes, but let me try. <laughs> The, the guy was like, look, you need me. I, don't, I can't come to your wedding. It's too by force. I don't dress. And when the king got there, he asked him, why are you not dressed? Yes, it is free. But it must have a dress code. So back to Esther. When I nearly left it, Esther had to bathe with six months of May six months of frank incense. And when the time came for every woman to meet the king, any dress you wanted, they would give it to you. You want to wear short dress, you'll be having it. Long dress, velvet color, earrings, no earrings, pomade, no pomade. Any how you want to dress, they will give to you. But I was like, when the turn of Esther came, he asked the Holy Spirit. He asked Haggai, the king's personal aid. And I always say that you must always have somebody who knows the king than you and tell you what the king requires. I remember when Lady Adelaide was coming to Lady Pastor, Lady, <laughs> Lady Reverend Adelaide, who was coming to preach for us. I wanted to build a very strong relationship with her because at that level. So I called. Bishop I didn't give me much information. I called Bishop Dapatim, whose wife is related to 
the Bishop Duck's wife. And she told me certain things the woman likes. I can't say it here. So I told some people, like Rukaya, like I gave Rukaya, this is your duty when she comes. The menu. They say, as soon as she comes, she will go. I said, don't worry. She came. He said she would come for two days. She came, we closed at 9 30. She left here one. My office came and she talking. Everything. The last day, Friday, she brought all the bishops in Ghana. Their wives, come and see it. Reverend Yali's church. They were here. We still have the pictures. She said, Sunday, and come, but I'll come. Sunday, she arrived here. It's not an invitation, no. It's not an invitation. There were things we got from people who knew her and what keeps her going. So when Esther was entering into the palace, everybody wore what they want to wear. When you get there, the king said, out. Out. Some of them, they will spend the night with the king, have sex. The king said, I will marry you. When Esther tells him, say, hey guy, what does the king want me to wear? Every invitation has a code. Every invitation in life. Marriage has a code. Honor has a code. Favor has a code. Attracting godly men has a code. Attracting numbers has a code. I have friends who tell me, you, dear, you, and what do you do? Anything we need in the world, you have some in your church. And it's true. Anywhere, except anywhere, any place, you, any link you need, we could get you, except we don't push it. It's a code. And what we can't have, we build. It's a code. I'm teaching something here. Ask someone sitting there, what does the king want me to wear? Now, the guy was at a party. So he's chopping, but he's not wearing the dress code that was required. And when Esther told the um, Hagar, the Hagar said, I've been with this king for years. This is the kind of dress she likes. Makeup, this. And Esther dressed exactly what the king wanted. As soon as she opened the door, most often the king will ask you, what is your name? The king said, I call you Esther. I don't care what your name is. You are Esther. Hey, all the ladies, go home. Search is over. Wedding starts. And all the ladies say, ah, yes, you dressed, but you dressed for you. You didn't dress for him. Most people don't get in from God because we dress for ourselves. You don't dress for God. If you see I'm talking about dress, I'm not talking about the cloth you are wearing today. And I'm not talking about fashion. No, 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 no. Behavior is a dress. How does God want you to live your life? I'll give you some. And guess what? This guy was bundled out by the same people who invited him. Thrown out. Bound hand and feet. And thrown out to hell. You see, I've seen many people that God gave them promises. God had mercy on them. God gave them favor. But at the end of the day, God himself allowed his people to bind their hands and feet and threw them to hell. People don't go to hell because they sin. When you are born again, sin is not the reason why you go to hell. Disobedience is the reason. 
Because when you sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, so many people like me, there were many people God could have used other than me. There were better people than me. But God said, if I'm sending this mighty people and they will not go. Yali. And now I'm on the field. I need to dress the way he wants me because what? He can help. And guess what? The guy came in with no bondage. His hands were free. His feet was free. He was just poor living somewhere. But by the time he was living, his hands were tied. His feet was tied and was thrown in hell. Wait a minute. What kind of life is this? How can I get into a party and come out in more trouble? How can I get an opportunity in life and by the time I'm coming out of opportunity, I'm in so much trouble? Because you did not keep the protocols that can maintain you in the place. I might teach you something here. And he said, many are called. But few are chosen. So how do I become chosen? Ladies will see many men, but will marry one. Men will see many women, but will marry one. We can all be in the same place in the presence of God. God will call one person. Why doesn't he make it all of us? Your dress code. Most often it is not the vessel. It is what the vessel does. So I was saying something. Submission will always align you. Submission. When he asked the guy, where is your dress? The guy gave no reply. Arrogance. It's like you could have easily said, I didn't get a dress, and you would have given a dress. But he knew the consequences, so he didn't give any reply. If you read the TLB version, if you read the TLB version, he said, Everyone who came to the wedding was given a dress, but he refused to wear it. On one hand, they say, I'm a pen. Nobody tells me what to do. <laughs> Especially people who make a little bit of money. A little bit of fame. Nobody should tell me what to do. I've served God at least in Chekra. At least I'm in my 28th year in Chekra. This 28 is different from when I was a sinner by serving God. <laughs> because my mother is a pastor. But I realized something that when it comes to God choosing people, God will prefer to choose a sinner than someone who disobeys him. Okay, 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 okay. You, you are confused a bit here. God has made provision for our sins, right? Or is it true? It's not true. And it's children who sin, right? So if, let's take it that you are a child and you sin, and because you sin, you cannot break through. First John said, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If you walk in the light, chill, chill. You, First John 1, 7, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus forgives us our sins. The blood of Jesus, what? And cleanses us from all on... Christ, and what? Blood of Jesus, what? Christ is son, cleanses us from all sins. Verse 8, we are reading tonight. If we say that we have no sin, in other words, we, we sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. Nine. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us our sins and what? 
cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? You see, sin is the evil. The unrighteousness is the consequence. Taking you away from God's mandate. Now, how does God sometimes deal with a child who is under authority when there is a sin? Galatians chapter 4 will tell you that the hair, as long as he still remains a child, is kept under the appearance until the time decided by the father. So there are, there are certain grace and a certain fathers, especially your parents. Do you know that you can misbehave at work? They will sack you, they will sack you, but your father, your mother will hand over a house to you. It's not true. Or is it true? It's not true. <laughs> you can be a failure in school. Nobody likes you. But your father can leave an inheritance for you. Ah, it's not true. Or uh, am I speaking the truth here? And people sometimes also think that the only way sins are forgiven is through the blood. Another one. John 15, 3. Read. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So when you keep hearing God's word Sunday after Sunday, day after day, the word also has a way of cleaning you. Ephesians causes the washing, washing of water by the word. It's like water, it's like, it's like how many of you have been down and then you hear a message in your spirit is up. It's cleansing. Am I teaching something here? Or you are confused? Look at someone and say, are you wearing the king's dress? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. So the king wants submission. There is no king who doesn't want submission. Number two, every king wants to be the priority. If I get home and my wife is on the phone, I expect her to hang up and talk to me. I must be a priority. She must stop whatever she's doing and greet me. I must be a priority. I must be noticed that I am around. I get to office, and when I get to the office and nobody's here to notice me, I get angry. It is the nature of kings. Recognition. When you recognize kings, they recognize you. Oh, you are quiet. So the Bible says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, seek if as God's character, personality, and his protocol. What is his righteousness? How he thinks. And everything you need, the king will give it to you. I can't finish. So, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Twenty and twenty-one. Let me show you how kings accept vessels. Am I teaching well? I want to do more. I said, "I teach power." But in the great house, in this meeting like this. Some vessels are gold. Some vessels are silver. The vessel is not the problem. Gold. You know what the problem we do? Sometimes we try to, we are not made of gold, but I want to be golden. That's not what God is looking at. Some of gold, you want to be made silver. Value. To God, the value. Let me tell you this. The ball that Ronaldo or Messi kick is more valuable than gold. 
<laughs> you, didn't, you didn't get the drift. One weekend that they play football, pa, and score, or not score, even when they are even on the bench, some are making like 500,000 pounds. So that leg is more valuable than Galamse. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of the times we want to be golden vessels, silver vessels, but that's not what God is looking at. Some can be a vessel of wood. Some can be a vessel of clay. Look, God used Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, Nebu, Nebu. Against his own people. He used Cyrus. And you are like, I've seen my servant Cyrus, I've anointed. God, you anointed with Cyrus. Do you know that some people don't know that even Satan is still anointed? Don't, never joke with once an anointed person, the anointing is gone. <laughs> that is why when Saul even messed up, David said that I can't touch the anointed. Because Lucifer is still anointed. Because they know how to still circulate the oil. Just that they are out of coverage area with God. So, some to try, I want to look golden. I want to look silver. I want to be like wood. I don't like wood. I don't like clay. Some for honor and some for dishonor. They don't respect you. Some respect you. Some value you. Some don't value you. But that's not what God looks at. It's not about the gold or the wood or the clay. The problem is not the vessel but what the vessel does. I think you are not getting it. It's not Esther, but it's how Esther dressed. Are you getting me? If any woman had dressed in that way, it's most likely the king would have chosen and later the king would regret because you don't have Esther characteristics. So when God comes down, he's looking for a vessel. He doesn't look for gold, silver, wood, or clay. But let's look at the next one. Verse 21. But if a man, therefore, if, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified. Now, I'm going to play with the word sanctified. You must become, number one, say, for you to become valuable. You must become a vessel of honor for your, for your Lord, that is God. A vessel of honor. Say a vessel of honor. Sanctified. I didn't hear you. Useful. Prepared for every good work. These four things. Can I ask you a question? All of you here, if my car gets spot, can I call you? What are you coming to do? <laughs> there should be a reason why God will look for you. <laughs> Did we hear that one? There should be a reason why God should look for you. So when God gets ready and he wants to drink from a cup, he's not looking for gold. He's not looking for silver. He's not looking for wood. He's not looking for clay. He's looking for a purged vessel. Sanct what is sanctified? One thing that has left the church, and I'll do this next week, if God, God or maybe on Wednesday, is the church talks about let me, let me check this before okay. The church talks about salvation. We are saved. And then the church talks about baptisms. Water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism. But one thing that we stop talking about, sanctification. What is sanctification? I'm set apart for this.
because of this relationship I have with God, I don't do this. Somebody asked me, do you drink? I said, no. Is it wrong to drink? I said, no. Then why don't you drink? I know the person was going to take me through religion. That's what was my answer. Because the vessel I am for God, I don't drink. He said, prove it to me with scripture. I said, Leviticus chapter 10, he said, as long as you stand before me, Levites, don't touch alcohol. He said, but we are in the New Testament. Do not be drunk with wine, where it's in essence, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I prefer to be filled with the joy of the Spirit than the joy of appeal. Does it call me? Yes. But what do I do? I am sanctified. I am set apart for it. In other words, everybody can do it, but I won't. The fact that everybody can do something and succeed, that doesn't mean you can do it and get, get out. Because, because Samson was sanctified because of her hair. His hair. I don't remember. That was his sanctification. I will not touch my hair. The day the hair was touched, that was his end. I know something most Christians don't have anything they have been set apart to God for. Do you know why the guy was bundled out of the place? The set code was a particular dress code. And he said, I don't want to. Look at him and say, What have you been set apart for? And can I tell you this? Whenever you get yourself set apart for a thing, that's what the enemy will fight. If you set up your part, I will never divorce. The enemy will come after you for divorce. I will never do this. The enemy will come after you for it. Whenever I make money, I will use to support the gospel. Oh, well, that's when the enemy will come against you for it because it is your sanctification. So you know what? I've seen people who are educated being blessed by God. And I've seen people who have never stepped in school also being blessed by God. Because it is not the gold or the silver, the wood or the clay. It's about being what? A vessel of honor. Sanctified. Sanctified. Useful. Useful for who? <laughs> Useful. Not for everybody. If you become useful for everybody, you become devalued. Prepared. Prepared for every good work. Let me tell you this. If you put me in a village to start a church, I'll play keyboard. I will sing. I will usher. I am prepared for what I'm doing. There is no area of this assignment God has given me that I'm not useful for. That I'm not prepared for. That I've not set myself apart for. I don't do certain things because that is the only way to honor the one who I've been set apart for. And when God is your husband, you must have these things. Can I have NLT for you? Say, I'm a vessel of honor, sanctified, I'm useful for the master, prepared for every good work. And let me tell you this, these four things, God will never do it for you. You will do it yourself. Because you're doing it is a proof that you want him. Let's read. If you keep yourself pure, you will become a special intensive for honorable use. So what determines a honorable use? The purging. 
Your life will be clean. You'll be ready for the master's use for every good work. Close your eyes with me. Let me tell you this that the Lord just told me. Can you imagine that God has prepared, I'm giving an example, it could be true. Has prepared this vessel to win souls. And he comes to church without a soul. You are not dressed. Somebody else has not done it, but it's well dressed. Please, are, are you getting me here? So when it comes to God, let's take this, then somebody comes in and brings the soul. This is the one who is useful. So usefulness to God is not a vessel. And you're in Kranya and I Gwini and I and are educated or uneducated. Jesus was leaving and said, I'll pray to the Father and he will give you a helper. This one was meditating about this. Something came to me from the Lord. I won't go into it now. But you are going to pray that God, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me? It's not everything God wants from you. Lift your, lift your hands, be on your feet and ask God, what do you want me to do for you? What do you expect of me? What are you expecting of me? Bozo buru begi nae, 